Welcome back once again to the Board Barista blog. That's right, it's a blog about spirituality, coffee, art, and gaming. So, while I'm here, I might be spinning a little, doing a little Pokemon Go. Uh, yeah, just trying to do that level grind, get up to 32. But, uh, while I level grind a bit, sit in my, uh, Equal exchange, fair trade, organically, locally, you know, ethically sourced. Uh, Cafe Salvador. We're going to talk about a topic that uh, I'll just come out and say it. I'm going to piss off half everybody with this one today. Uh, we're talking gun control. We're talking guns, and you know, as. Uh, most people do when they're sitting around and reading signs in a bathroom. I don't know why there's stairs in the bathroom. You know, it's, it, it doesn't. This door doesn't even lead it in. Uh, just for you that don't understand where I'm recording, why the acoustics are so interesting in here. But no, uh, I'm sitting here and I'm reading this. It's a simple uh, "May I be" meditation. You know, "May I be saved." May I be healthy, may I be happy, may I be at ease, may I be filled with loving kindness, may I be peaceful. See, that's the real reason why we're in here. Acoustics. But no, you get a sun like this, and you're thinking about gun control, and as a as a student, uh, currently a student, you know, I'm in grad school, that's still a student, but uh, no, in my, in my younger days, in my younger school days, you know, before undergraduate, before all that stuff, I was a, I was a public high school student who, quite frankly, because of bullying and the school environment that I was in before I transferred from my hometown school to Hodgson High School, um, I didn't feel safe. You know, I, I was not safe. I was not mentally healthy because I was unsafe. I was, I was not happy because I was unsafe. I was not at ease because I was unsafe. And I was not filled with loving kindness because I was unsafe. And I was not peaceful because I was unsafe. And 18 school shootings, oh, 18 mass shootings, I don't know if they're all school shootings, but since I graduated uh, since I finished up my undergrad back in 2008, 10 years ago, it's, it seems like I can't go a month without there being a shooting in, in the news. And you never, it's never shootings at post offices or at banks or courthouses or, you know, donut shops. It's never places where the cops are. It's never where, you know, there's going to be resistance. There's going to be shooting in movie theaters. Uh, the Batman movie when it came out and that person just dressed up like the Joker and armed himself with a bunch of assault weapons just went into a movie theater just started mowing people down. Shootings always happen in places where you think that you're going to be safe. That you think that you're going to be protected. You know, where, you know, in a rational, civilized society you should be safe to be able to walk into a church and not have to fear for your life. You should be able to walk into a school and not have to fear for your life. You should be able to walk into a movie theater and not have to fear for your life. And maybe that's the way it was back before, you know, I was in high school when the Columbine shootings happened. And one of my classmates, she was the, you know, she was the sweetest, she was the, the sweet and innocent school girl. You know, would not say crap if she had a mouthful. You know, would, didn't, wouldn't swear, you expect her to wear a nice white sundress to church every Sunday, even when it's a negative 20 below. I always had to be the she was the prim and proper girl, and she saw this because they brought us in to the cafeteria to have because it was the only room really big enough to have all the students meet and discuss this. And she was like, "I can't understand why two students would do such a heinous thing and shoot up a school." And I looked at her and said, "I can understand it. I mean, they probably were beat up, harassed, tortured, you know, mentally and physically." For years, and they just reached their breaking point. 
because I was a kid that was bullied from kindergarten until ninth, until the first, after the first quarter of ninth grade, I had every day, I would, I was always looking over my shoulder because I didn't know if I was going to get beat up that day. I didn't know if I was going to get beat up during recess before school, if I was going to get beat up after lunch, or if I was going to get beat up waiting for the bus. But I knew it was coming. And I knew it wasn't just going to be one student, it was going to be multiple students, and I had to watch it. I had to be on guard. I, I had no friends because I was paranoid that anybody I let close was just somebody that was going to lure me around a corner so three other guys could jump in with them and beat me up. I was scared for my safety as a high school student. I carried a knife with me every single day as a high school student when I went to the public school in my hometown. And I was scared. I, 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 I told myself, this, the next time is going to be the last time. It's, I'm going to make, you know, I was ready to make my stand before I transferred. You know, I, one of the bullies that tormented me daily, mouth, it just got in my face in the middle of English class and I grabbed a textbook and I was ready to beat them to death with an English textbook in class because I was so on edge. I was so scared because if I didn't finish that fight with him and finish it completely, I knew that the next opportunity that he got to go grab two or three of his friends, it's going to be the four of them beating me up. And then the school administration was going to not just send them home, they were going to send me home. I was going to get in trouble for defending myself. There's this whole huge cycle. And that's, that's 20 years, no, that's over 20 years ago this happened to me. You know, I was there and I was scared and I was at that point where I was about ready to cross that line. I transferred schools, I actually was able to make friends, I found a place where I could be safe, I could be happy. You know, I could, I could no longer worry about my safety and I could focus on my academics and I was on honor roll almost every year in high school. Because you know, I was able to feel safe and secure and I didn't have to look over my shoulder and I could flourish. Now, that's 20, well, about 22, 23 years ago when I just had to worry about somebody with their fist coming and causing my bodily harm, I couldn't, I probably couldn't stand it as a high school student today, knowing that somebody could go out and just show up in my school one day with an uh, arm with a arm with a rifle and just, you know, if, if somebody's gonna beat you up with a fist or somebody's gonna pull a knife on you, you got a chance to fight. You know? There's a chance. To, to be able to take that weapon away from them and be able to do it. But you're sitting in class and just somebody shows up, opens that, kicks that door in, and starts shooting bullets. There's no chance to fight back. There's no ability to sit to save yourself. There's just luck and and duck and cover. And you know, I'm reading through my Facebook posts and there's there was a little girl that was in elementary school who after you know, hearing about the safety drills comes home and tells his mother she needs new sneakers. You know, that her sneakers aren't safe because they light up and they'll show up, they'll tell a gunman, you know, each step she takes will tell a gunman that she's running that way and she'll be able to shot down. As a kid, you know, I, could, I couldn't understand how these kids are going to be able to live in this environment going forward and have that worry over their head, have that sword of Damocles hanging that any day, this could be the day that it's my school, where it's my school and my classroom, where somebody who's got a grudge against the world decides to take out their grudge against the world. And it's probably not even something I've even done personally myself. It's, I, 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 this student has not slighted this gunman, but this person is in the path of this gunman. So, no, I, I really hope that some way, somehow, we can come up with an answer to the gun problem. And I want to say, here's where everybody's saying, I'm probably going to say that, we should just take away the guns from everybody. Understand, I don't believe in that. I don't believe that everybody's guns should be taken away. I believe that everybody does have a right to own a firearm. But I believe that there are some people who just are not able 
You know, there are times where we step in, the government steps in and says, okay, you are not able to do this thing that you should be able to do. You know, Department of Human Services can step in and be like, you're unfit to be a parent, we're going to take your kids away. Okay? If, if the government can, be, can walk up to people and say, you're unfit to be a parent, we're taking your kids away for their safety, then the government should still be able to walk in and say, we're going to take our, your guns away from you because you're unfit to operate a gun. If you're drunk, drinking, and driving, the, the police have the right to, to have the ability to take away your vehicle and, and lock you up, and then you have to pay to get your vehicle back. Or, if you've done this enough times, they just take your license away and you're not allowed to drive anymore. You know, it's, I've seen stuff on Facebook where it's like, yeah, okay, so everybody has a right to own a firearm and go on, you know, where the people, are, it said something along the lines, everybody has a right to own a firearm and go on a mass shooting spree, but it's a privilege for the victims of mass shooting spree to be able to have health insurance. So, yeah, no, there needs to be some control. There needs to not be just, oh, everybody gets to have guns. It's like, no, I'm from Arusa County, and in order to get, no, I believe in hunting and, and, and allowing people to hunt. No, I'm from Northern Maine, you know, born and raised in potato fields. I spent most of my days, but most of my weekends was spent either with a fishing pole in my hand or a hunting rifle in my hand. At least when I was in junior high. I used to go tire practice with my brother and my next door neighbor. We used to go shoot guns up in the woods, hunting squirrels. I had a B, I've had a BB gun since I was in Cub Scouts, you know. I've always had a gun around. And not to, you know, fear of over you know, fear of the government, you know, having to overthrow the government and lead a rebel resistance group or anything like that. I just had it around because, you know, I believe that uh, I got my, I've taken the hunter safety course. Mother's also took it. She has her hunting license. Uh, I didn't get my hunting license this year. Um, I really should get it next year because I love how deer taste. And uh, hunting for you know partridge, deer, turkey, bear, moose. I mean, that's all good eating. It's all good food. It's self-sustainable. It's eating wild game. Uh, as long as you you know, care and maintain the, the environment, the ecosystem that those animals live in, there will always be food, as long as you've got a rifle or a shotgun. But an AR-15 is not a food hunting weapon. It is not something you go out and get food with. And sure, if, you know, hunting culture, if it ends up being that we have to take the guns away, there's still crossbows, there's still bows and arrows, there are still there are still the traps. You can still trap trap game. There's still opportunities for that, but I think that uh, leaving us, you know, a bolt action hunting rifle and a pump action shotgun, leaving us those, taking away semi-automatic weapons because it is it is there's no there's no ability to buy fully automatic weapons because those things have to be registered. And you, you, if you own a fully automatic weapon, you have to have a special license. And the, you know, the food, the alcohol ATF can show up at your house to inspect to make sure that you haven't sold those to somebody that isn't supposed to have it. So assault weapons, uh, tactical weapons, you know, these type of firearms, no, no, you need. If it holds more than six, it holds more than six shots. Okay, for a 22 to hold some of those hold 10. But if it holds, it holds more than that, more than the standard stock ammunition, what are you doing with that? You know, you don't need that. And that's where I stand. I stand that you should allow us to still have hunting grade firearms, these tactical and assault grade firearms. It's overkill. All it is is it's people that don't feel safe. And they, and they don't feel healthy, and they don't feel happy, and they don't feel at ease. So every time there's a school shooting, you know, that whole philosophy of, oh, the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, so I gotta go out and buy some more guns, because, you know, they'll, they'll stop selling them, I gotta stock up, be able to defend myself against all these crazy people in the world. And it's just, so, you know, it's, oh, that mentality, all that is is somebody trying to sell two guns. Because seriously, if, if you're worried about your home safety, 
a burglar breaking in, somebody who doesn't fire a firearm regularly, uh, somebody who doesn't want to have, like, if you got it, yeah, let's say you got an AR-15 with some 223 ammunition, okay, that's some, you know, it's, it's comp, it's a military version of the 22, where, you know, it's got some penetrating power, oh yeah, and somebody breaks into your house and you end up shooting them and it shoots through the wall and hits somebody in the other room, you know, you got penetrating power of an AR-15, you know, in a close environment, and you're just spraying and you know, at somebody that's burglarizing your house. You gotta worry about the fact that you're shooting the person across the street. You gotta worry about shooting the person in the next room. You're worried about shooting through the door and killing the person on the other side. Now, if you hit somebody with some buckshot or some bird shot, okay, the reason why you can fire a rifle in the air or a handgun in the air and you can end up coming down and killing somebody like a couple miles away is because that force continues through. You know, that, that big thing. But a shotgun that spreads out. It, it doesn't have as much penetrating power, but it'll hit the person. They'll know that they got hit. I had a friend of mine in high school actually got shot in the chest with bird shot. It didn't kill him, and he was still alive, but he was not moved. He, he, he went down, and he, the rest, his chest for the rest of his life looks like, well, it looks like Deadpool's face. I mean, yeah. he, he, he got hit. He got hurt. You know, he felt that, and... A shotgun can make for much better home security. You don't have you don't have to worry about the bullets going through the walls, going across hitting your neighbors, you know, hitting bystanders in the street, hitting you know, penetrating through and hurting somebody in the next room. You know, it goes out, it hits the person. It doesn't. It, it's it's the whole reason why they don't use in, in sci-fi movies. They actually talked about this. One of my favorite episodes of Babylon Five talks about why they didn't use slug throwers anymore because of a an actual projectile weapon instead of an energy weapon can penetrate through the hull of the ship and next thing you know you got explosive decompression. It's future on It's like, do not fire, you know, they got the whole uh, Native American that breaks out of the holodeck and says, do not fire a uh, boomstick in space canoe, cause explosive decompression. That's uh, words of wisdom, you know, being told to the white cat, the white spaceship captain. Very ahead of its time, but uh, no, it's we need to come up with a solution, and I know that I'm not going to be able to come up with one right here, right now. In the uh, see, that's why I caught the Pokemon. I was trying to give myself a timer. What's my journal say? When was the last Pokemon caught? Journal. Cause I only got 22 minutes for the recording time. I know I'm wasting some of it right now, but... Yeah, that was caught at 1 of 12. All right, so we got 17 minutes. We got 5 more minutes I can worry about. That's good. But, uh... No, seriously. We need to have the talk. I personally... You know, this is where I stand. No assault... Nobody needs an assault rifle. Nobody needs a tactical weapon. Tactical, tactical weapon. You can get by with a simple handgun. Uh, you know, something, you know, if you can't get it done in 10, then you sure as heck ain't gonna be able to get it done in 30. Uh, so, handgun, nine clip, one in the chamber, nine in the clip. If you wanna have a handgun that holds that much in your house, you're cool with me. You want to keep that in your house for home security and stuff like that? That's great. I would recommend a shotgun because chances are you don't get the chance to shoot all that often. A shotgun has a wider spread, less penetration. It's more of a whole thing of you're able, you're going to be able to in the middle of the night when you're half asleep, be able to use this. There are ways to get non-lethal rounds for shotguns where you're firing beanbag uh, rounds or you're firing. Uh, rock salt rounds that are non-lethal but still will hurt and still be able to deter a intruder. You know, there are ways, and you can use the shot in a shotgun, you can also get slugs so you can take down a bear. You don't need 50, you don't need 30, 50 rounds and a whole thing that's got pistol grip. Now I can put a laser sight on this thing. Leave us our hunting rifles, take away the assault and tactical, 
Now, leaves are both action 22, 22 magnums, so we can do biathlon training. 